Well, good morning and good afternoon for everybody that's joined our webinar here. Uh, today, we're going to be digging into the Apex console, and we're going to wait just uh, maybe another uh, two or three minutes for folks to join the session, and then we'll be kicking right off. So thank you for joining. A big hello to everybody that's joined the webinar here. We're coming to you live from Dell Technologies World. We're going to give it just 60 more seconds, and then we're going to kick off the webinar on today's topic, which is a deeper dive into the Apex console. So we'll start in just one minute. Thank you. Okay, well, good morning from an incredible Dell Technologies World 2022. I'm super excited to join you today to talk a little bit more about the Apex journey and specifically about the Apex console, which is really the nerve center of everything that we're doing with Apex. It's been an incredible couple of days here at DTW. If you had a chance yesterday to join the keynote session on day one, you heard Michael and Chuck Witten talking at length about what Dell Technologies is doing with the Apex as a service portfolio of solutions. And today we're going to get one level deeper. We're going to go a little bit further into what this Apex experience looks like for you as an organization or a customer of Dell Technologies. My name is Adam Smolka. I'm a senior director here at Dell Technologies for our Apex specialist team across North America. I've been fortunate enough to be at Dell uh, since 2004, so about 17 or 18 years now. And this Apex uh, portfolio of solutions that we are offering our customers is one of the most transformative forces that we've seen in the data center uh, over the course of the past couple of decades. So I think a great place to begin this conversation is to maybe frame up what are some of the challenges in the traditional way of doing business, the way that we traditionally procure IT solutions in the data center. Well, if you see on the screen here, I think there are a number of factors that organizations have been grappling with. Number one, when you are in a traditional procurement model, it's a very manual process to get the IT solutions that you need. There are uh, a lot of steps that you have to go through. You're sizing out quotes and you're working on pricing and you're going through contracts and redlining. It can take a long time. Multiply that by the fact that once this traditional infrastructure shows up in your data center, well, then you and your team have got to deploy all of this infrastructure. And that's something that can take weeks or possibly months. Now, if you've got a variety of different platforms that you've procured, well, now you have a variety of different management tools that you have to juggle in order to manage everything that you're deploying. And it's even worse if maybe you're working with multiple different technology vendors, then you've got disparate silos that you have to learn new skill sets and new tool sets in order to manage. All of this creates a tremendous amount of complexity 
for an IT team? How do you manage and navigate this IT journey going through this more traditional sort of uh, process. Now, on top of that, in a traditional procurement model, this is a CapEx experience. You're writing a big PO. You're paying upfront for a ton of infrastructure that you're going to use over the course of your depreciation cycle, maybe the next three or five years, but you're paying for all of it upfront today with today's dollars. Look, all of these reasons that you see on the screen here have led into this tremendous increase in what we call shadow IT. This is lines of business or this is application owners within the organization that say, well, you know, working with central IT, with our in-house IT, it's too slow, it's too complex. I'm just going to go out to the public hyperscaler of my choice and spin up the infrastructure that I need. And then you have this spread across the entire organization. You know, we call this shadow IT. And that feeds right back into the complexity that I was describing. This just makes it that much harder for IT to put their arms around everything that's happening. So in direct response to these challenges that organizations are facing, Dell Technologies has launched this Apex as a service portfolio that is built around these three critical pillars that you see on the screen. Number one, Apex as a service is all about true simplicity in your IT operations. We're giving you a modern commerce experience. We're streamlining it and making it easy to do business with Dell Technologies. We're also delivering agility that we've never before been able to experience with on-prem infrastructure. We're allowing you to scale faster. We're offering everything in the Apex portfolio as a service on demand when you need it. And most importantly, we're delivering control. We're unifying this entire experience. We're breaking down the silos in the data center, and we're giving you true control and transparency over what's happening with your infrastructure. Now, if you caught the keynote yesterday with Michael, he made a really great point, which is, look, this debate about public versus private infrastructure, public clouds versus private clouds, well, the debate is over. It's not either or. The clear answer from our customers and from organizations is that it's both. And with Apex as a service, what we are delivering here is really the best of both worlds. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen, look, there are a lot of attributes of on-prem private cloud infrastructure that are critically important to organizations. Number one, cost containment, delivering a better cost profile to run your workloads, better performance for today's most demanding applications and risk mitigation or security posture, when your data is on-prem, when you can touch and see and feel it, well, then you've got the ultimate in security to make sure that you understand what happens in the event of bad actors uh, attempting to attack the organization. Now, you are also with Apex, though, bringing in all the benefits that you see on the right-hand side that we enjoy from the public cloud massive simplification in how you operate your IT infrastructure, the ability to move faster, to be agile, to scale up, to scale down, to move at the speed of business, and to accelerate how you innovate and how you can respond to the needs of your organization. With Apex as a service, you're bridging the divide. You don't have to choose between private or public. You're getting the best of both worlds all in one place. Now, I've mentioned a few times here in the presentation that Apex as a service is a portfolio of solutions. This is not a single widget. This is a true portfolio. You have options here for everything from consuming block or file storage as a service with Apex data storage services. Perhaps you wanna modernize and simplify your on-prem infrastructure you wanna hit the easy button. Well, we have Apex private and hybrid cloud offerings to do exactly that. Or maybe you want to lean in on the reality of multi-cloud. You want the ability to have true workload elasticity to move your workloads from on-prem to public cloud to public cloud B and back again on demand, really making IT the broker of the workload. Well, you can do that with a fully managed hardware and software stack top to bottom with Apex cloud services with VMware cloud. Now, you can also see on the right-hand side of the screen here, 
We have another side of the Apex portfolio are Apex Custom Solutions. With Apex Custom, you can take anything in Dell's industry-leading uh, data center portfolio of solutions, and you can deliver it to the business as a service with true elastic financial payment terms. Simply pay for what you're consuming when you're consuming it. This has proven to be a game changer for organizations that are looking to move faster. So I mentioned at the front end, today we want to dig a little bit deeper, go a layer deeper with the Apex console. The Apex console is really the nerve center of everything that you do on your Apex journey with Dell Technologies. And the Apex console is organized around these same three principles that we talked about. With the Apex console, we're really delivering true simplicity. We're streamlining the entire process of procuring the IT services that your organization demands. We're giving you true self-service capability, and I'll show you a demo of what that looks like. We're also allowing you to really deliver the automation that you need to deliver agility. We're allowing IT to move at the speed of business, move faster than ever before. And most critically, we're delivering the control that you need to take care of your most critical asset, which is your data. You have role-based access. You control who has access to what in the world of Apex as a service. Now, in this Apex console, it is jam-packed with feature functionality. You can do everything in the console here from browsing through the catalog of all the different Apex services that we have available. You can subscribe all by yourself in the console frictionlessly through a seamless process. Sign up for the services that you need on demand. You've got the ability to deploy workloads. You can monitor everything that you're doing with Apex. You can see performance and capacity and trends and get really intelligent insights into what your infrastructure is doing. You can optimize your utilization. You can optimize how you're spending and where those dollars are being allocated and best of all, you can grow. When the business demands that you move faster and you need additional resources, well, you can add those resources when you need directly in the Apex console. Now, I want to take just a quick minute here to walk through what this Apex console experience looks like. We're going to look at an example. This is from the real Apex console of how you would sign up for Apex data storage services. So first of all, you would see the first question on the screen here is, well, do I want to deploy this service in my own data center, or do I want to deploy this service into a co-location managed by Dell? So in this case, we're going to pick a Dell managed co-location. Next, you would simply pick the type of storage services that you need. Are you looking for block services, or do you need file services? In this case, we're going to select block services. Next, we think about the characteristics of the workload that you're going to be running on the service. Are we talking about performance optimized? So is this maybe a high performance database that you're looking to run on storage as a service? Is it maybe more of a capacity optimized? You need uh, large, dense drives, a lower cost to serve, but more capacity. Or are you maybe shooting right in the middle and you need a balanced config? Think maybe general purpose VMware consolidation. In this example, we're going to pick the balanced tier of performance, and then we simply define, well, how much capacity do we want to sign up for? You can start as low as just 50 terabytes in the world of Apex storage as a service, and it can scale up into multi-petabytes. In this example, we're going to pick a nice round number. We'll pick 100 terabytes of storage as a service. And then the final question that you would think about is, well, do I want to subscribe here for a one-year term, or would I like this storage as a service for a three-year term? In this case, we'll pick just one year. Now, that's really the whole process. That's as complicated as it is. It's incredibly easy to sign up for the services that you need. You would enter in your billing address and some of your shipping details here, and right there in the console, based on the answers to those couple of questions, you would see exactly what the cost would be for the different characteristics and parameters that you picked for your storage as a service. And you can see at the bottom of the screen here in yellow letters that we have an objective here to deliver this storage as a service to your data center or to your co-location uh, within as little as just 14 days. And that is delivered, that is stood up, ready to accept workloads. So when you think about a time to value responding quickly to the needs of the business, 
you can see how this is a real game changer for customers that are quickly adopting these as a service uh, offerings from Dell Technologies. So what are the next steps? Where do you go from here? Well, I would encourage everybody on the webinar here today to visit Dell Technologies Apex. You can get a lot more details on the different offers that we have available, some of the technical specifications. You can see white papers and use cases and other organizations that have successfully signed up for and are using Apex as a service. We also would really recommend that you schedule some additional time with our pre-sales engineering team. We've got an incredible team of professional services uh, engineers here they can meet with you and schedule a workshop to define your workloads and the business and technical outcomes that you're looking for to make sure that we're putting together the correct as a service solution to meet your very specific business and technical needs. And then finally, if you're ready to get into this console that I just demonstrated and see for yourself just how easy it is to navigate and how to use Apex as a service, well, you can simply contact your Dell Technologies team and you can identify who your Apex console administrator would be. You sign up with a simple email and you have full access to everything available as a service from Dell Technologies with Apex. I appreciate your time so much today to take a little bit of a deeper dive into Apex as a service and the console experience with me. Thank you for joining. Have an incredible rest of your Dell Technologies world. Talk to you later. Thank you.